everyone. So today I will uh, present you uh, some kind of two-sided presentation. Uh, and first I will focus on how we can reach out to the public uh, and transfer uh, research information so that they can understand what we are doing. And the second part will be, if we have time, it will be, will be more focused on research tool and tools for researchers. So first thing, uh, I will go very fast on this, but still it is the backbone of our uh, proposition and our, uh, our work. So we are a, a platform. Oh, it's very dark. Okay. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the the diagram is quite complicated, but I will not go in depth about that. But to to be clear, it's a platform designed to allow research project from many uh, interdisciplinary fields to share, integrate, and valorize uh, cultural and natural heritage datasets related to the Loire Valley. So it's a, in some way, it's a very local uh, project. So for us, it's something that we have to take into account. And this is why uh, our pipeline, how to ch we share uh, the datasets and the research datasets is uh, really uh, a local thing. So as you can see on the screen, uh, we can say it's a three-step process. Uh, the first thing uh, is cultural events. We have quite a lot of cultural events on the local, uh, the regional area, and even uh, on a national scale. So we are focusing on those events uh, to appeal to the public uh, by means of various uh, innovative experiences, uh, like the one you can see uh, on the bottom of the slide. So we have a volumetric display, we have a stereoscopic uh, display which you can interact with, we have 3D prints, we have obviously a virtual reality and stuff like that. Uh, the thing is with cultural events, you are close to the public, to the people you want to interest in your data sets. And this is why uh, each time after every uh, experience, we are uh, going with the public and speak with them and explaining uh, what is our pro process, uh, what we are trying to, to display, uh, what, how the data was acquired and stuff like that. So just to focus on the first part, you can see the volumetric display on the screen. Uh, we think that innovation is a strong tool to uh, interest the public and to reach to them so that they can uh, look at our uh, data sets and this is the easiest way we find to reach out to the public and explain uh, our approach besides the technological parts. And we can go deeper with the public uh, if they are interested. And on the ethics side, we try to be as open as possible about the scientific data and what kind of shortcuts <coughs> we are doing, uh, we are taking when we uh, produce the experiences because uh, obviously it has to be very short because there is a lot of people and everyone wants to try uh, the experience. So we have to, to transmit information in a very efficient way and sometimes we have to take shortcuts with the data sets. And it's important to tell the people what are these shortcuts, why we are doing them and what it, is, uh, what it implies about the data sets. So, so uh, I will uh, say that dialogue uh, with this kind of experience with the public is very important. Uh, on a side note, because we are doing a lot of virtual reality and I have been doing virtual reality since 2015 or like something like that, uh, virtual reality has become a, a common medium and we know right now we cannot just do VR because it's not enough anymore. Uh, we need to do good VR and often enrich the experience uh, with added value, with very uh, innovative interaction or a strong, stronger link between the virtual and real world. But uh, the problem is we have also a lot of old uh, VR experience and it uh, raises the question of what are we doing with this uh, old VR experience? Should we uh, re reproduce them in some way, or upgrade them, or should we not just don't use them anymore and move forward. And the, besides that, we have the other problem that to reach the gold standard in terms of quality of the VR experience, uh, it requires no 
more efforts and consequently more fundings uh, to produce uh, a good experience and we have problems to find those fundings to do good VR experience. So uh, this is a, a timeline of one of our uh, exhibition, I would say. Enfin, first, it, tried as, it started as an exhibition. Then it moved as a, when the exhibition was finished, it moved as cultural events with other uh, medium of uh, expression. Then we had the 3D web viewer, so the web part. And we try every, every time we try, uh, when we go to the web, to make a link between uh, the shiny experience and what is uh, the core, the backbone of uh, our research, the digital platform. So it's always difficult to have very nice but simple experience and to foster people to look what is behind uh, the shiny experience and the research data. So that's something we are trying to link, we are trying to make, but they are not really ex uh, easy to do. Uh, one other uh, of the experiments is Mecaleo, it's around uh, Leonard de Vinci. So I will not explain uh, exhaustively what, is it, what it is about because it's explained in, in the article. But uh, the idea is we start uh, with a serious game in virtual reality where people can uh, reconstruct a uh, mechanism from uh, Leonardo, da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. sorry. <laughs> and we have another part of it, so people only do one or two uh, mechanism, and then if they want to finish the experience, they have to go on uh, our, our website and do it uh, with another game, which is more or less the same, but uh, when it's on our website, they can go and uh, have link with uh, the data set related to uh, Leonardo da Vinci and the, the process of uh, constructing machine mechanism, the codex and stuff like that. And we tried uh, to have a very transmedia approach uh, for this one because we have a web documentary linked to this experience and hints uh, about the experience uh, are uh, hidden in the web documentary and you can obviously advance in the VR and the, in the experience uh, with the hints from the web documentary. But from the experience of this transmedia exper experience, uh, it's very difficult to have a very real transmedia approach because it, it, it is necessary to think uh, every experience of the transmedia application uh, at the same time so that they can uh, work together. And often uh, you, the development of each experience is not uh, synchronous with the other and we have problem synchronization. Okay. So that, that was uh, the part for the public. For the research tools, which is my, my main uh, work, uh, I will just say a few words about uh, Pottery. Pottery is a point cloud viewer on the web, and we have been using it uh, for quite some time now. Uh, I have been uh, uh, advocating okay, uh, in favor of point, the usage of point cloud for a long time now. And it goes uh, with some problem about uh, user interface. So if you want to try it on your mobile phone, I invite you to test it, and it's very difficult to navigate. So the problem with Pottery is its UX is uh, very complex and not non-hierarchical. So even with a, a desktop with a full-scale screen, uh, you cannot navigate uh, efficiently inside the interface. So we are thinking uh, about redeveloping the interface. Some have tried, uh, but it was not... Uh, good enough for us, so we try to develop our own interface so that we have a, a layer system and things that help uh, people that are not familiar with the, the tools to, to work with it uh, on desktop and on the mobile side. So this is a, indoor, uh, a development, uh, undergoing development, so I will not stay too, talk too much about it. Uh, and the last part is again related to poetry, but also to the interaction between virtual reality and desktop uh, tools. So... Hey, glad you could make it. Let's take a look. Oh, sorry, I didn't know there was so... <laughs> uh, so the idea is to make a link between virtual reality and, and uh, the desktop side, so that people can annotate uh, point cloud. Those meeting rooms in the back look good. The, can we check those out? So we are... Uh, the, the basic idea was to make something like the other deck video you can see as a button on the slide. So it is a project by NVIDIA and the idea is uh, a mix user collaborative work in virtual reality. Uh, and what you can do in virtual reality is you can send this focus on desktop. 
Uh, show me what you've done. So that people with uh, different kind of uh, support can work together. So this is an ongoing development uh, with the uh, Thank you. Uh, game I'll see you next time. And a look and uh, a few plugins like Vertica, Fatten, which are free plugins, not for most of them. Uh, so, uh, very quick. <laughs> and yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>